I am new to GitHub, and I have lots to say. I don't give an F about the effing code. I just want to download this stupid effing application and use it. Why is there code? Make an effing exe file and give it to me. These dumb Fs think that everyone is a developer and understands code. Well, I'm not, and I don't understand it. I only know how to download and install applications. So why is there code? Make an exe file and give it to me. Stupid effing smelly nerds. Over the past couple of days, if you've been anywhere on the internet with developers, you've probably seen this post, and you've probably seen a lot of people memeing on this individual. GitHub is a platform for developers. How don't you know how to run a single command? Isn't it easy? GitHub is not a platform to find applications. Go somewhere else. This application isn't for you. Now, for any of those people taking this just a little bit too seriously, I encourage you to check out the person's post history because you'll realize very quickly that one, this is either a burner account the user made a month ago simply to troll people, or two, this is a literal child and this is their first time using Reddit and they wanted to mess with people, or three, all of the above. So calm down a bit and stop taking the meme so seriously it's not an attack on you personally. With that being said, let's actually take it seriously. Obviously, the way the user communicated is absolutely terrible, and this is not the way you ask for anything to be done. If this is the way you ask, even if you are completely right, people are going to disregard what you are saying. And that is exactly what is happening here, because if you remove all of the terrible wording and you just focus on the message being said, I think the user is actually right. And this isn't just me playing devil's advocate. I think that if you're a Linux user, you also think he's right. You may disagree with me for now, but follow along with me. So the project in question in the post is called Sherlock. This is one of those really interesting tools where you can do something really cool or you can do some less than savory things with it. Basically what it does is let you search a bunch of social media platforms for a specific username. So you could use this to track down your old accounts. Maybe you had a username you used as a kid and you wanna see where it was being used. Or it can be used to find accounts of people that maybe you want to go and harass. Obviously, please don't go and do that. Now, the way you install this, and this is why there was so much drama around it, is with this. You clone the repo, you cd into the directory, and then you run pip install on the requirements file to install the dependencies. That is all you do. Obviously, you probably want to chmod the script as well, but that is all you do. Realistically, you could do this in two commands. Just get rid of this and just put Sherlock here instead. This is not a difficult app to install. There's not a bunch of configuration you need to do. There's not some additional patches you need to install. There's not some weird like make commands you need to run that are not well documented whatsoever. This is it. And I get why with this specific example, people are mad because this is also a CLI application. You need to have some basic, basic terminal knowledge to even be able to use the application. If you don't feel comfortable writing a command into a terminal, you can't use the application because you need to run the command from a terminal. And I totally get it. However, let's stop focusing on the Python script example and talk about this in a more general sense. What if we have an app that is considerably more complex? What if it's something like MPV or VLC, really popular video players that honestly, I think you're probably going to be good using either one of these. Personally, I prefer MPV, but that is besides the point. So these applications, if you want to use them, are available as a binary, available as an EXE or whatever the thing that macOS uses is called. You can just download the file and run it. On Linux, it's going to be in basically every single package manager's repo. But let's say that wasn't the case. Let's imagine for a second that this GitHub or this GitLab are the only places that you can get access to this application and they don't have these binaries available. Instead, the only way to get the application onto your system is to pull down the code and compile it. For the technical users that understand compilation and understand code, 
all of the information you need to compile these applications is available. On the MPV side, it's available in the README under the compilation section. On the VLC side, there is a separate wiki. And then in the building section, you have different building guides depending on what platform you're using. Say you're on Linux, for example, there is going to be information depending on which distro you're using, all the things you need to do here. Basically, everything you need to know is on this page. And you can work it out if you want to spend the time to work it out. But I think we'd all agree that the average user doesn't want to deal with this. Instead, they would rather just download the application and then just run it on their system. And I don't just mean the average Windows user. The average Linux user is in the exact same camp. The majority of applications you install on your system, you don't go and compile the code from source. Instead, you will install it from your package manager, whether that's with your distro package manager, whether that's with some sort of portable container solution like an app image or something like a flat pack or a snap, or even if you're on a source-based distro like Gentoo, even in that case, you generally don't concern yourself with how the application is being built outside of maybe passing in some GCC options. Instead, all of that build complexity is hidden behind a merge, and if you want to see it, you can. But you can install applications on Gen2 without ever seeing how the application is being built. Pretty much the only case where you actually care about how an application is being built on Linux is if you're going through Linux from scratch. And yeah, there are certainly people out there who are insane who do actually run Linux from scratch as their main primary system. But even on Linux from scratch, at some point, you probably want to install a package manager or just write your own package manager. At some point you realize, hey, maybe compiling everything myself, maybe dealing with all of this directly on my system just isn't worth the effort. And it's also completely understandable that a user wants absolutely nothing to do with the code. If you're not a developer and you have absolutely no interest in becoming one, or maybe you are a developer, but you're a Python dev or a JavaScript dev, and the application is written in C, C++, Rust, Fortran, just a language that is very, very different from the skill set you have. You could go and examine the code, and you're probably going to understand some of the basic similar concepts like, oh, this is a loop, this is an if statement, all of this sort of stuff. But without going and deeply analyzing the code, you're probably not going to have any understanding of what's actually going on. So you having the code there doesn't personally affect you. It's great the code is there for the people who want to access the code, the people who want to order it, the people who want to modify it, all of that stuff. And that's what's great about open source. But a user doesn't necessarily have to concern themselves with what is going on in the code base. It would be nice if everyone understood the code and everybody was a developer, but that's not the world we live in. For a completely non-technical user, maybe they'll say, oh, I've heard about this open source thing. I guess it's free and I don't have to pay for it. And that's pretty much the extent of them caring about it being open source goes. Now, the main point of contention I've seen is GitHub is a development platform. And if you're going to be using it, you should be a developer or at least have some sort of understanding of developer tooling. And this is not a platform for non-technical users to find applications. And yes, at its core, this is true. And there was even a post on r slash GitHub stickied by one of the moderators. But once again, reality doesn't always line up with the way that people actually do things. From a couple of years back, do you guys remember the LTT Linux challenge? During this, I don't remember if it was Linus or Luke, but one of them needed some random script to fix an issue on their desktop. This script was only available on GitHub. In this case, yes, GitHub is being used as the development platform for this script, but it is also being used as the distribution platform as this is the only place the script is being distributed. I don't know where this idea that GitHub is just a development platform came from. Even GitHub knows that's not just what they are. Yes, that is part of what they are, but why do you think they have things like the releases page? Why do you think they provide all of this build tooling so you can automatically generate binaries? They don't need to do that. 
they want to also be a distribution platform alongside being a development platform. They want to be this one place that you go to get everything you need for a project. They don't want you going to other websites to go and download the binary. They want to have you constantly staying on the site. And whether it's for a random script or some small application that hasn't been packaged anywhere, there is a lot of cases where the only place to find an application is on GitHub. It's not just a development platform, it is also used for distribution. And if you don't want it to be used for distribution, don't use it for distribution. Do your distribution through a separate website or start getting packages available or any of these other means that stop GitHub from being used to distribute the application. Once again, I totally understand people being annoyed with the way this post is being framed, the way things are being said, demanding for something to be done. No developer needs to go and make an external place to distribute the application. No developer even needs to make a binary for you. They can just put the source code out there with absolutely no readme and just have it there. They are free to do that. However, if you are distributing the application through GitHub, you have to acknowledge the fact that you are not just using it as a development platform, this is also being used for distribution, and you may get people who are like, I don't know how to compile an application, I don't know how to install this, I don't know even what I'm doing here. That is going to happen. But this is not the way you ask for it to be resolved. But what do you think? Do you think this person has a point behind all of the terribly phrased wording of it? Or do you think, you know, just get good scrub, learn to code, whatever you want to say, let me know down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs, the bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and get good.